Nova, um, and this is AGSAA's first podcast. Um, we have been uh, trying to update you guys on all the work that the organization um, has been doing, but sometimes that gets really tricky because we have to make time to create materials and resources and put it on social media and write thoughtful, try to write thoughtful um, captions and things like that. So we figured this might be easier, so just bear with us as we're figuring out how to do all this. Um, and I'm here with Rafa, my assistant, and uh, my son and dog are also uh, here. And um, yeah, so so excited to get started. If you guys have ideas also, um, we have the first few uh, podcast slots kind of sorted out, I think, um, so we can keep the content flowing. But if you guys have ideas also, then you can email info at agsaa.org and tell us if you want to be featured or if you have an idea or if there's somewhere someone in your constellation, like whether it's a therapist or a doctor or a researcher or a family member or anybody doing interesting things in the space, let us know and we can try to um, have them on too. So that's I have all sorts of yeah. ideas and people that I want to yes. invite, right? Uh, so we just went to this GLIA conference and I have pages of follow-ups that um, I think I got through like half of them, but uh, a good number of them were about asking people if they would come on and do one of these with us. So um, I'm really excited about it. I think it is easier for us and probably easier for everybody, yes. right? And the great thing is people can listen too. Like they don't have to watch and, mm -hmm. and tune in. They can listen in the car when they're driving to appointments. So we've been talking for a while about doing a webinar series and uh, we had a couple of people we were trying to work that out with. And I think we realized it's difficult to get everybody to, to schedule it. And then all of the family members, um, the community are gonna have a hard time, you know, joining at any particular day and time. So this way we can put these out somewhat regularly. Um, people can consume them as they want. And it's gonna be a lot easier for us to just have uh, some casual conversation about this kind of thing. So uh, first question, is what are we going to name this thing? I know <clears throat> we were we were tossing around some ideas, but I don't know what quite fits. I think you asked the community too if they had any any ideas. We obviously have to have something funny, I guess, because we try to infuse humor. Well, that's mine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not funny. I, it, I needed to be. When funny. you met me in person, that's, were you shocked funny. by how unfunny I was? Uh, no, because I knew how unfunny you were. <laughs> Uh, over all the conversations we had. Um, uh, no, no, I, I, I'm just being silly. Um, so uh, I need to introduce myself. I'm Patrick Winters, and, uh, uh, and I'm a dad. And um, so Devin and I have been, uh, like, we've been talking for since 2019, you said. I think it was uh, kind of like the, the summer yeah. after the, like, winter, spring that Ari was diagnosed, you know, and I was talking with you about getting involved and, um uh, you know, over the last couple of years, it's been kind of a roller coaster of like kind of getting my life in order. Mm -hmm. um, but for the last year, um, we've been pretty mm -hmm. tight. And so uh, we both just attended the Global Leukodystrophy Initiative Scientific Conference together. We, uh, you know, represented the AGSAA, the uh, ICARDI Gutierrez Advocacy Association. Um, and uh, we had Roth in attendance too, that I should mention. Mm -hmm. The only um, child. It was just very different. <laughs> in the, in the, the, only child, the only child. Yes, <laughs> literally the only child in a, in a stadium full of scientists. Um, and it's her second. Clea but it was uh, just to kind of be in person. I, I want to I get. Oh, it's her second one. It's your second one, right? She didn't go without yes. you, did she? No, no. Um, no, I hope not. Um, I just want to acknowledge for everybody, uh, one thing that I didn't really get is, uh, you know, we talk a lot and we do these video conferences, but, um, you've been going to these conferences and you've been keeping up with, with a lot of this stuff with me, um, while being a full-time caregiver. Um, and, uh, you know, I got to see that and every single time you stood up with Rafa to like get something, there's like five people in the audience, like all stood up to like help you open the door and stuff like that. I mean, there's like an odd there is a recognition that it, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, and so I, I will say that meeting you in person, I was very impressed um, uh, by how challenging that is. Um, so I, you know, I work remotely, you know that, not, maybe not everybody knows that, but I work from home. So I have a lot of flexibility and um, I work in technology. So I sort of fit a lot of this stuff in uh, between things, but um, uh, 
family comes first, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, we're always kind of flipping these things in between um, therapy appointments and uh, school drop off and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, as you uniquely know, um, uh, some of the other advocates might know this too, or the people we work with is that I'm usually in my car. So it was nice to actually be in person, um, not driving around while listening and trying to do other yeah. things. Um, I thought you were a lot taller in person than I expected. Um, uh, but I think that's just because there were not a lot of tall people at that conference. For some there were not a lot of tall people. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not that tall. I'm only six feet tall. Um, and all of my friends growing up, everybody was six feet yeah. or, or taller, you know, so I, I never felt tall, but yeah, I, I like towered over everybody. <laughs> it's very strange. We have a funny picture of uh, the Vanderbilt lab and um, a couple of scientists and I'm just like standing in the back, like, you know, yeah. head above everybody. So for the conference, um, so the first day was the advocacy. So basically it was three days long. Rafa and I flew from Los Angeles um, and then you flew from Raleigh. Um, and, uh, we didn't get a chance to meet on Saturday night because we both got in kind of late, but, um, but we were there Sunday, um, almost all day focusing on advocacy, advocacy specific things. So there were a few people that were non-advocates there, like some industry partners, right? But it was primarily people like from different leukodystrophy diseases and then, you were really instrumental in in creating that segment, right? In your role as um, the GLIA kind of CTN co-chair. We're going to have to do a podcast, I think, by the way, on just like acronyms at some point. So everybody knows what we're talking about. Yeah, there's so many of them. Kind of annoying. Or maybe some key, uh, like so people know how to follow along. But yeah, so you you helped to plan that, right? You well, let's, let's pause there and say what GLIA is. Oh, first. yes. Uh, so GLIA is the Global Leukodystrophy Initiative. Uh, it is, uh, I think it was founded by Adeline Vanderber, right? She's at least the chair of mm -hmm. it. Uh, they have a clinical trial network. So there's a couple of centers around the US and the world. I think they have somebody, are, are they in Amsterdam too? Yes. Okay. Um, at the BUNC? Glia.org, I think so, is the website if anybody wants to look further too. Yeah, the glia.org um, and uh, uh, Dr. Vanderver, um, uh, Dr. Florian Eichler, uh, Dr. Ali Fatimi, um, uh, Dr. Fatimi is in Kennedy Krieger, uh, Florian Eichler is in uh, UMass. Boston. Um, and I don't know all of the names just yet, but uh, right now I think that I think they make up the board of GLIA. But it, essentially, it's a, a, a number of leukodystrophy centers and leukodystrophy experts. They're able to share data. Um, they're doing a number of uh, natural history studies and, and clinical trials for AGS and for a couple of other leukodystrophies. Um, they also organize what they call the advocacy committee. Um, and that's what Devin's talking about. So they have um, uh, Erica Barnes as the chair, uh, and I volunteered to be the co-chair. Um, so you said that I was instrumental in organizing the advocacy workshop. That's not entirely true. Erica did most of the work. I want to give her all of the credit. Um, I just gave thumbs up on things and I volunteered to give the opening remarks, which uh, terrified me a little bit when I was like standing in front of the podium, but um, it went well. Well, I luckily got the preview. Sorry, I interrupted you, but. Oh no, it's great. That's good to clarify. You know, like I luckily got the preview when we, uh, when I was sitting at the advanced um, junior guard prep practice at the pool um, in my town last week. And then because I was late to your actual session. So, so I'm just going to give full disclaimer that I actually didn't see him do it in person, but immediately when I entered a little bit later, um, that morning, it was actually like, I think right as you were finishing up, um, uh, everyone came up to me to tell me how amazing you did. Um, and then throughout the conference, all three days, people were recalling like quotes you had said and how much it impacted them and how great it was. So I feel like you should actually, maybe we should record it. So, um, so, and put it on our YouTube or Vimeo or what, what are we using now? Like for all of our content for our video content? I think, I think YouTube is going to be okay. easier. It'll be easier. Yeah. So then we'll put it Moving on YouTube forward. on AGSAA um and uh on our channel and then everyone can see it i'm happy to do it um i'll just give the gist was uh, and i think this is why everybody liked it the gist was just uh we have no idea what we're doing that was <laughs> that was like how i opened the whole thing um and uh you know it's the truth um the the i think it was funny because uh you know some some advocacy groups are like brand new 
Um, and some have been there for like 20 years and they have um, tons of money, but, but none of us know exactly how to interface with scientists or like work with the FDA on, uh, you know, drug approval. And it, nobody knows. Um, and it changes. In fact, I think in the last couple of years, what I learned at the advocacy workshop is that there's a lot of new things going on with mm -hmm. the FDA holding meetings to talk to uh, advocacy groups and families to hear about, um, you know, the difficulties in their disease to help sort of like balance, you know, um, uh, risk ratios, yeah. right? Will they approve a medicine that might have certain risks? Certainly they, they should, even if it's, uh, um, you know, even if, even if there's certain risks, but, um, you know, there's no alternative. It, mm -hmm. If we get that message to them, they will listen to that. Um, and so I might be jumping ahead a little bit, but this reminds me of the elephant in the room, um, Eli Lilly and Bear Sittman. Mm -hmm. um, we should talk about that for a minute because we had an opportunity to uh, catch up with a couple of research scientists. They're not the people that run the Bear Sittman trial, uh, which is still technically active, um, but uh, you know we, we had some dialogue and uh, they are also, they also have continued interest in AGS. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we have an opportunity here to talk to the right people um, and make something happen. But um, uh, tell me what was going through your mind uh, when you, you, you were just like on fire uh, in that one conversation. I loved it. Well, honestly, um, you know, it, it was a lot for us to travel, like all the way from Los Angeles. Like, you know, at this point in Rafa's size and age and just the fact like, you know, having her and like a suitcase like, and being at an airport is like a little bit tricky. And that's something I usually do with my husband, Carlo. And my son, Van, is also old enough now that he can bring bags and he's a great big brother and helper as well. Um, but that was the reason that I flew across the country was because, um, you know, as you know, and I don't know if the families really, you know, understand this to the extent that I tried, like I've been trying since probably 2017 to talk to Lily and, um, and, you know, there were just a lot, there was a lot of resistance about like the fact that they were not designated for HES and they kind of just wanted to focus on rheumatoid arthritis. And that's like a whole other podcast that we could talk about that history and, um, and like what we at least understand of like that. But, um, I, I was tired of, um, you know, we try to help so many families like get access, like you've put so many resources on the website. Um, we've tried to help physicians understand why it's important, like to, to consider this. And I just wanted to really take that opportunity that we had that I didn't know if we were going to have again, um, just to get our foot in the door a little bit. So my background is in um, business development and um, marketing and advertising. And so um, I, a part of what my job was to, was to convince clients um, that we, you know, that we could provide specific services or that they needed to choose us over other um over other advertising agencies or other networks. And I wanted them to just like choose us. I wanted them to realize that, you know, what our families, um, that I wanted Eli Lilly to like choose us and prioritize us and, and make sure that they understood what was at stake here and that the decision was ours to make whether or not we wanted to accept the risks and really clearly understand in the absence of like this medication, what risks, um, uh, that that presented too, and I think I think that um, you know they were probably a little bit taken aback, um, you know, at the approach. Um, but I feel like we oh, were, yes. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, but at the same time, like you know, they're they're working. <laughs> Yeah, their work. Yeah, exactly. Like in a good way. And they, they didn't run away and hide from us. Like they came back and they said goodbye or they asked additional questions. Like when we were in line to get coffee for you, tea for me, like and um, and, you know, it so it feels like it mattered. And, you know, after your first conversation with one of the scientists, like he already had started sending emails. And I think that, you know, we probably hit that point of um compelling isn't the right word, but like, and inspiring isn't quite, the, quite the word either, but that where they were motivated to, to try to figure out what was happening. And the other cool thing was like, once we realized they were kind of earlier stage research researchers, um, 
that there could be additional opportunities like, you know, uh, with this industry partner um, to look for more effective therapies. And so, so yeah, I mean, I just feel like that, that made me feel good that, that we were able to get in, not in a room with them, but in a lobby with them, I guess. Um, and well, I had a beer with, yes, with, uh, that one guy too, <laughs> kind of, um, that was at the networking event. Um, so Which after I the first day of the conference, to. there was a sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you showed up. Um, <laughs> but I, I managed to talk to him then. Um, and it was, you know, similar thing, but, um, what I find, and this is just kind of like a general statement about AGS, um, is that a lot of people, including the scientists don't necessarily have um, as a, a, a deep and wide understanding of the disorder as we do. Um, and so to them, it's sort of a textbook thing, mm -hmm. right? And the textbooks are out of date um, and we need to get better about that. But so really you taking the time um, and explaining to her uh, a little bit more about what this disorder looks like and how this is, uh, you know, helping a lot of our kids. Um, I think, like you said, it, it, it was compelling to them. Um, and as far as, uh, you know, working in the future, you know, I, I tried to be really clear, like we can absolutely help with that, but this is our priority first, right? We need to wrap this up and we need to finish this because there is still a lot of general confusion out there about whether or not this, what this medicine does for our kids. Does it cure the disease? Does it, you know, um, so uh, getting this FDA approved for AGS will really just unlock a lot of things mm -hmm. um, and it will give everyone a much better a foundation to build on with their physicians mm -hmm. moving forward. So, and we also talked uh, a lot about. Some, I was happy with that. Yeah, we talked a lot about some other creative solutions, like you know, uh, just for the the midterm too. Like, um, and so uh, you know, because it's like it would have been easy for us to go and like just be really mad and like bang our hands on the table and tell them how awful it's been. Um, but, you know, we really were trying to, to approach it with creativity and problem solving, which I think is so much of what this job as advocates for a complex disease like AGS entails. Um, and, um, and we're all mad, right? We're mad about everything, yeah, not just Eli Lilly. We're mad about what's happened to our kids. We're mad about all, all of our doctor appointments. We're mad about insurance denials and all of the stuff we go through. We're mad that we have to go to a scientific conference and and talk to scientists and industry people to connect them. I'm, I don't I don't like that I have to do that, um, and I guess I don't have to. But I see that this is to a certain extent this is how it's done, and there's an unmet need, right? So that's why I felt like I showed up. Um, okay, so uh, Glia Conference, uh, Philadelphia uh, it was this year. It was uh, three days if you include the advocacy workshop. Um, we went. We talked to a lot of people. Um, I have a notebook of pages and pages. I have to insure this thing um, because if we lose it, it's like really valuable. Um, and uh, we got to meet. And I think all of that was really helpful. And, uh, you know, these these video conferences and all that that we've been doing with everyone for a while, um, it's, it, it was really nice as much as I don't want to admit it. It was actually really nice to be in the same room and just have some casual conversation with people, right? Um, mm -hmm. So some of the podcasts that I want to bring moving forward are um, – you know, some of the, some of the people that do like the, the, the background work, you know, um, uh, scientists that are working on cell models and, uh, you know, uh, working out the details of, uh, you know, potential, well, not potential upcoming clinical trial reverse with reverse transcriptase inhibitors, or, you know, somebody that's developing an animal model. Um, so I want to bring the science stuff. I know that you're really passionate about nutrition and uh, therapy and AAC and communication. I think that we'll bring all of that sort of stuff together. Mm -hmm. um, in this format. So, um, is there anything that you would like to add or should we wrap up? And no, um... I mean, I think we'll wrap up. Um, and, uh, but I also, you know, wanted to mention that we, we were talking newborn screening, we were talking patient registry, like we were talking about a lot of things, mm -hmm. a lot of people. So we may not have shown like the breadth of what these conversations, you know, were in this podcast, but, 
but we were, you know, we were representing everybody and, and hopefully like, you know, representing like what we want the future of HESAA to be. So, so it was really fun to do that with somebody um, else, <laughs> which was exciting um, at these conferences because I've attended them kind of solo, given that I was in Brooklyn and Philadelphia was so easy to go to. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I've also been to a bunch of other conferences this week. Um, we have the Nord. Hopefully we can sit in on some Nord sessions virtually. And then, you know, there's a newborn screening conference and we're always just trying to learn everything we can um, so that we can figure out like what to do. So, so anybody who ever wants to go attend a conference on our behalf virtually or yeah. if there's something you're interested in pursuing, like, you know, th there's opening, there's availability like to do that. So. So just let us know what you're excited yeah, I, I get really uncomfortable when, when uh, I get really uncomfortable when the scientists or whoever like call us like the advocacy leaders, you know, and I'm like, I just, I just showed up, you yeah. know, <laughs> um, uh, anybody that wants to show up, show up. So that's, that's, I think, uh, this, this conversational podcast hopefully makes it a little bit easier. So we'll, we'll bring some other people on that are doing some things too, but, um, uh, yeah. I think that that's it. Let's uh, let's end it here, and um, uh, we'll we'll plan the next one. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for you're going to say bye, Rafa. Bye. She's like you're using bye. iPod, so uh, my iPad, so that I can't say goodbye. But <laughs> yeah, can I have my games back? <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your. Uh, just don't watch this one. Get, this is, we're gonna, yeah, this is, we're gonna take a mulligan on this whole podcast here.